Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from the Red Lesson channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate your support. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Rivera Parfum. And this one is called Heavenly Oud. So stay tuned. Now, before I begin the video, I do want to mention that this product was sent to me for review by the company, but as always, all opinions will remain my own, but I just want to disclose that for my subscribers. So the CEO of the company, Mr. Rivera, he actually reached out to me on Instagram and he asked me if I wouldn't mind uh, doing a video or a review on one of their fragrances. And so he decided to send me this one. He actually sent me a bunch of fragrances, both for myself and my wife. So thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. And I believe he has a lot of original releases, but he also has fragrances that are inspired by more popular uh, niche fragrances and so this one for example if you couldn't tell by looking at the box I know it's a very sort of indie presentation he actually does everything by himself really impressive uh, this one is supposed to be his take on Oud for Greatness by Initio so I'm going to be letting you know further on in the review if I think this fragrance smells anything like Initio's Oud for Greatness but let's go ahead and start things off by taking a closer look at the presentation so the presentation for this one contains this black box with this ribbon on the front and the heavenly Oud logo affixed to the front on the inside of the box you will find this piece of paper that says Rivera Parfum their date of establishment and also a way to contact Adrian Rivera who is the CEO and founder of the company. And on the inside of the box is also a silhouette in which the bottle rests. The bottle has the same ribbon around it that you also find on the box. The cap does not click into place but it is a snug fit so you can pick this one up from the cap. The distribution on the atomizer is nice and wide. Let's continue with the smell. Now, I just want to start the review by saying that if you are purchasing this one as an alternative to Oud for Greatness, you're definitely going to get something that's in the same family. It's in the same wheelhouse. It falls under the same perfume classification, but I don't think it's a carbon copy. I think the similarity is only about 60 to 70 percent. I think there is a lot that's missing, but that doesn't change the fact that I find this to be a really good scent. This actually smells similar to Kalimat Black. So if you have experience with that scent, this one smells similar to that. It has that agarwood note in here, and I don't know if it's natural or synthetic. I'm gonna, I'm given to understand it's synthetic because oud is a very expensive ingredient, of course, but there's a certain creaminess about it that I really like. Almost imagine combining agarwood and tonka bean. The tonka bean, it's a little sweet, it's a little creamy, it adds a nice little touch to the composition of um, a very approachable nature, and so this is a great entry-level oud scent. Um, oud for greatness, I know a lot of people out there say it kind of has the sweetness in the opening that someone would equate to the sweetness of like Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirk John. This fragrance is totally missing that, but that's okay because I do think that this fragrance smells really nice. It's really pleasant and it's a really nice agarwood scent for those of you who are just getting into oud based fragrances and you don't want like an oud luwak by a reach Lador. That one is like my favorite oud based scent of all time. And if you're not into something very rough and tumble, rugged, animalic, this is certainly a fragrance that I would recommend you check out as a great alternative, but also as an entry-level scent, something to basically get your feet wet. Um, as this starts to dry down, the sweeter nuances become a bit more apparent. Yes, there's something about it that's a little spicy in the opening. I can't quite pinpoint where those spices are coming from, but you can tell there is definitely a complexity to the scent. And so it's not a simple or linear fragrance. It does evolve and develop on your skin and you definitely need to put this one on skin in order to get the true progression the true evolution of it so once again thank you so much for sending this bottle to me for my consideration let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment now first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell uh, I do think that this one is a pretty unique scent and I say that because like I said earlier, I think the similarities to Oud for Greatness are only about 60 to 70 percent and so I actually have both of them sprayed here and this one is definitely this fragrance 
And this one is definitely Oud for Greatness. So there's just something about the DNA of Oud for Greatness that I think is quite iconic. It really stands out um, and I would place a bet. If I smelled it in the air, I would say, yep, this person is definitely wearing Oud for Greatness or nope, I think he's wearing an alternative. And so there's just something about it. Maybe it's a captive ingredient. Maybe it's something that is licensed and it, it remains exclusive to the brand. Uh, but there's just something about it that's really, really unique. This one, on the other hand, really solid scent. If you're in the market for an Oud based scent at an affordable price uh, that is also very easy to wear and the overall smell of this one is very pleasant there's nothing about this one like I said earlier that smells BO ish or animalic or rough and tumble I think it's a very approachable scent and so I think a lot of people will really enjoy this one in terms of the longevity longevity was really good I got about seven hours projection was great for the first two hours however I don't think it ever radiated beyond an arm's length in terms of the versatility I see this one being worn in the colder weather and this has a formal appeal to it so I can see this one being worn dressed up. In terms of the presentation I got to give it to Mr. Rivera. I think he did a pretty cool job at an indie level presentation where he puts everything on the bottle by himself and there's a personalized note on the inside and it's really really cool and I think that a lot of that also contributes to him being able to sell it at that affordable price range. So my final verdict on this one is I really enjoy the scent, but I'm also a fan of Kalima Black, to which I compared this one to. So if you like that scent, I would recommend you go out there and check this one out. I think it may be in your wheelhouse. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Heavenly Oud by Rivera Parfum. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Or if you've uh, tried anything from this brand, I would love to start that discussion. Leave a comment down below and I will reply to your comment. Also, if you are new to this channel, I would love it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you need to do is click that red button in the corner and this way, whenever I do review uh, fragrances in the future, and not just reviews, but also top tens, giveaways, unboxings, interviews, special guests, and a whole lot of other fragrance related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed and you never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching everyone. I love you guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.